Good morning. I just want to welcome Reverend Yost, who's with us again today. Thank you for being here. Um, I don't have too many announcements. Miss Judy, anything with Bible school? I'll come down to you. I need some help right after church. I need two strong bodies to go downstairs and bring the whiteboard up. But please see me before you do that. And I need some people to help move chairs in the back. And I need two tables towards the front and four chairs. Thank you. Anybody else have announcements? There are a few things scrolling there. Um, the flowers on the altar are in honor of Joy and Sylvester Catherman, my parents. Their 63rd wedding anniversary is tomorrow. So... That's what the flowers are for. Okay, if we have no other announcements, um, we'll get started with worship with the ringing of the bell. Good morning. I invite you to rise as you're able. Today is the Sunday of Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit given to the church, given to us. I invite you to follow along in the call to worship. Divine teacher, we're all around us with your wisdom. As the holy winds fill our lives with dreams, empower us to live God's hope in this world. May the divine gales of this day move us to know the love of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Sabbath morning we gather as the Spirit breathes new life into us, sharing the hope that is ours through Christ Jesus. 
through his life, death, resurrection, ascension, we now gather together as one hope, one body, and one Lord. Let us pray. On the, oh God, on this day you open our hearts and the hearts of all your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. seated. Okay, kids. Come on. You're short. Get up here. Get up here. Up here. Good grief. You know, she thinks she's Charlie Brown now. Okay. Do you want to turn to come on to us? Oh, okay. Hey, we'll, 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 you can sit here. We'll sit here. Okay. So, what brings you here today? I don't feel right if I don't come. My roots are down here. Right. What brings you here today? It's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're here. Right? Doesn't matter how old we are, what kind of condition we find ourselves in. We're here today, right? <laughs> we made it. We made it. Right? Because, uh, you know, sometimes it's a little stiff getting up on the mornings. I think. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here today. And we're here because God's Spirit brings us here. And today, Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what does the Holy Spirit teach us? Yeah. Teaches us about God, right? Now, how many of us here feel God's presence here? Come on, hands. Uh, hopefully, we're feeling God's presence here today, right? right? We feel God's presence here, right? And so the Holy Spirit enables us to feel God's presence here today. And feeling God's presence here today, hopefully, will enable us to go from these doors and go out and bear witness to the love of God, right? And that love of God comes to us in so many different ways. One of the ways it comes to us is it teaches us how to pray. Just as the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, we are also led by the Spirit to teach us to pray. And so we will pray, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Mighty is our God, mighty is our King, mighty is our Lord, ruler of everything. Mighty is our God, 
Mighty is our King, mighty is our Lord, ruler of everything. His name is higher, higher than any other name. His power is greater, for he has created everything. Glory to our God, glory to our King, glory to our Lord, ruler of everything. Glory to our God, glory to our King, glory to our Lord, ruler of everything. Good morning. Hear the word of God in our first scripture reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judah, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Philbury and Pamela, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judah and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, they are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the first reading. The second reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God, <coughs> excuse me, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption when we cry, Abba, Father. It is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Here ends today's readings. May God bless the reading and hearing of his holy word.
Let us pray. Almighty God, most gracious Lord, receive the gifts that we bring from our hearts and from our hands. A gift of thanksgiving, a gift that energizes the hope that is in us so that we may continue to bear witness to your holy word, to your presence, to your guiding love, and to the future that you place before us through Christ Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our eternal hope. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything... I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today is the day of Pentecost. Fifty days after Easter, we come together celebrating the gift of the Holy Spirit given to us as the church. Now, Pentecost was a Jewish holiday that probably goes back almost 25 years hundred years or more. It was understood as a festival of the first grain harvest in Israel, when the people would gather in Jerusalem giving thanks to God for their first harvest. It was celebrated at the temple. But after the temple was destroyed, Pentecost seemed to have a different understanding for the people of that day. It then became understood as a time in which the people remembered the gift of the Torah, the law that was given to the people on Mount Sinai, given through Moses to the people, so that they would have an understanding not only of God's presence in Jerusalem, but how God was somehow acting in their lives wherever they might be. Whether it was in Galilee or Samaria, or even in Judea, throughout Judea, that they would have an understanding that God's, not only God's law was with them, but somehow God's presence would be with them. The prophet Joel talks about that in his prophecy, talking about the Spirit of God that is being poured out upon all peoples, no matter where they are. So that you didn't have to be in a, any particular place to know that somehow God was with you. And as Joel prophesied about that, Luke takes that image in both the Gospel of Luke and in the book of Acts to talk about God's Spirit that now has come to us, as he talks about in Acts 2. 
But to kind of have an understanding about this, one has to go back to the third chapter of Luke, Luke 3.16, where there seems to be some disagreement, some confrontation about what John the Baptist is up to. And the people have already heard that there's this guy, Jesus, out there also who's talking. And what were people to believe? How was God's presence being manifested either through John the Baptist or through Jesus or however it might be understood? And John the Baptist came to out in Luke 3.16 and he says, well, you know what? I baptize you with water. But one coming after me more powerful than I am, he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. Luke appropriates that image throughout the Gospel of Luke, where the Holy Spirit during Jesus' earthly ministry resides solely with Jesus. But now following Jesus' resurrection and, he, and his ascension, Luke understands that now Jesus gives the Holy Spirit to us. Gives the Holy Spirit to us as the church. Jesus says, my spirit, I breathe unto you. My peace, I give to you. Now the reason Jesus gives his spirit to us is so that we will bear witness to what God's up to. That is that we will open our mouths, and we will take our feet out into the world, and we will share this good news that God is up to in and through Jesus, and now through us as the church. And so this mighty wind that disturbs these disciples in the upper room behind closed doors, this mighty wind disturbs them to such a point that they begin speaking in other people's languages. What does it feel like to be in a place among other people and they're speaking a language that you don't know? Feel lost. What might they be communicating about? Maybe they're saying some things about us that we don't want to be revealed. <laughs> they probably are. But now, God sees to it that the disciples of Jesus now have the ability to bring this good news of Jesus out to the world. Not just to people who speak Hebrew with a Galilean accent, but now to people from all parts of the world. In fact, Jesus shares that I send you out as witnesses to Judea, to Galilee, to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Yeah, that first Pentecost certainly was a miracle. But the miracle rests with us today. Because we're here. Somewhere along the line, maybe weeks ago, maybe years ago, maybe decades ago, we heard people talking about Jesus that we understood. And on this very day, the day of Pentecost, there are churches in 147 countries throughout the world that are speaking the good news of Jesus. One can only imagine how many languages today this word of God is being spoken to. Even in our country, probably many different languages and versions of English. I had the opportunity for many years to serve a church in West Virginia where it took me some time to learn about their accents. See, you all is about 
eight syllables. <laughs> but there was a day on a Saturday in which one of the parishioners came by and said that she delivered the flyers for the church. <laughs> Who ordered flyers? What, what kind of pamphlets are we handing out today? You know, because uh, I had no idea what she meant till I walked into the church and understood that she brought the flowers for the church. <laughs> it takes some of us a little bit to catch on. But we have somehow caught on because we're here today. Now, the Holy Spirit is not an easy thing to talk about. It's a little bit different than the disciples because they had this body of Jesus right in front of them. They could see him. But now, following the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, we are given the Holy Spirit. And we are to trust that God's presence is with us through the Holy Spirit right now. Now, maybe you've heard this before, but in both Hebrew and Greek, the same word, in Hebrew it's ruach, and in Greek it's pneuma, that means both breath, wind, and spirit. So you'll find places in the Bible where this word pneuma is, right? It's particularly in John 3, in Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus, and Nicodemus thinks that Jesus is just being windy. Right? But he's really about the Spirit. And so we'll see the same word translated differently. There. We see that in Paul's letter in Romans, which was read just a little bit ago, because it says the Spirit of God will join with our spirit, two different spirits, to bring us together to understand that we are all children of God. Now, I think one of the things why we gather together on a day like Pentecost is because, yes, we've heard it. We think we understand it. Well, most likely, we're quite removed from it. We're quite removed from it because Jesus prays that this gift of the Spirit that's given to us will enable us all to understand that we are all children of God. Now, when I invited you up forward for the children's message, you didn't come forward. But you're children of God. You see, sometimes we think children are just these little ones, right? But we're all children of God. And the reason we gather on a day like Pentecost is so that we will begin not only to understand, but we will begin to live it out that we are to be the kind of people that God wants us to be. That we will somehow be united and that we will understand that indeed we are all children of God. You see, when Jesus sent his disciples out, giving them the gift of the Holy Spirit, he gave them so that they will bear witness to the spirit of truth. As John's Gospel says, the spirit of truth enables us to understand, yes, there's one God, the Father is in the Son, the Son is in the Father, and that we too are called to be part of that unity that God has revealed to us through Christ Jesus and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So one of the things that we know today on this day of Pentecost is not only are we a little bit windy, and I get that given to me quite a bit. Uh, I, I remember way, way back when uh, it was time to go to my elementary school open house. And uh, so we walk in, and my dad wasn't much of visiting the school for any reason, but he went along on this day to open house and 
we go in the front doors of Washington Elementary School, and there's the principal, Mrs. Rouser. And she goes, hi, John. And, and my dad says, how does the principal know you? <laughs> and Mrs. Rouser says, well, he can be quite windy at times. Well, God wants us all to be a little bit more windy than we are so that we will be able to bear witness to this good news of Jesus that comes to us on the, not only on this Pentecost day, but each and every day of our lives. Now, it's not easy being a witness to God. You know, sometimes it's probably easier to keep our mouths shut. Sometimes we are in some places and amongst other people where it would be easier not to talk about Jesus. Now I'm going to throw a question out to you. How many times in this past week did you invoke the name of Jesus, not in a good way, right? Did you invoke the name of Jesus in a conversation with someone else that you met this week? Maybe it was at home. Maybe it was outside of the home. But how many times have we invoked the name of Jesus in, our, in this past week? Now, the, one of the reasons I think that Jesus gives us this spirit is that whatever situation we might find ourselves in, as Paul says, this spirit gives us the courage and the boldness even in those most difficult of times, to speak the word of God, to speak the word of Jesus. And so we have to ask our, ourselves, well, we're the church today, right? We're here at church, right? It's the 5th of June, right? 5th of June, the year 2022, and we're here at church. And you didn't come here just to listen to me, I hope. You came here to feel the presence of God and to be entrusted with God's word. To be enabled by God's power and God's spirit so that you too will be able to wear, bear witness to God and that we will continue to have a church in the future. This particular congregation, Dreisbach, has been here for a long, long time. The church that brought me to this area was part of this congregation many, many years ago. And now you're two different congregations, two different churches, but you still have a purpose. And that purpose is for us to continue to bear witness to Jesus in our world. Now we have to know a little bit about the truth about what's going on. I would venture to say at this very hour, there are probably more people in the golf course at Shade Mountain than there are in here right now. There's more people out for breakfast already in many different establishments. And I guarantee you, there are more people still in bed <laughs> than there are here this morning. And it's a challenge of our time. It is the challenge of our time to be the church today. To make it real. To make the spirit alive. To help us to kind of have some understanding that God has given us a purpose. God has given us a reason. And in that purpose and in that reason, God gives us his very spirit that will continue to share this good news of Jesus. Now, none of us, none of us are very good predictors, probably, 
of what the future will look like. No one here probably will be able to accurately tell what Dreisbach Church will look like June 5th, the year 2032. But it's up to us to make sure that in the year 2032, on June 5th, that there is a church here. And that there's people still bearing witness to the good news of Jesus. Because God thinks it's important. God thinks it's possible. God believes it's probable. Because God has breathed his own spirit onto each and every one of us. Now Paul also talks about these gifts of the spirit that has been given to us. Now each and every one of us have been given different gifts of the Spirit. But Paul assures us that each and every one of us have been given gifts of the Spirit. So none of us can say, well, no, you can leave me out of that equation. You know, I'll come here on Sunday mornings and I'll sit and I'll be quiet and I will listen, but don't ask anything more of me. Well, that's not the church. The church needs all of us. And the reason the church needs all of us, because no matter where we might be this week, God might tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, there's someone, there's someone that needs to hear the good news of Jesus. Whether they know you or not, go up to them and share it can be as easy as saying, God loves you. You don't have to go into some long theological discourse. You have to simply go up to them and say, no matter what's going on in your life today, the one thing that both of us can be sure about is God loves you. That's all that Paul was trying to do in the 8th chapter of Romans. And you know what? Paul says, sometimes it's difficult. And Paul says, sometimes even in our greatest weakness, when we don't know what to say, the Spirit's going to be there. And the Spirit will help us. The Spirit will help us along so that we will be able to share in one way or another God's good news. Now, many, many years ago, maybe if you know or heard of this guy named St. Francis, well, St. Francis was someone who didn't speak well in his youth. But God showed him through God's Spirit to continue to bear witness to the good news that God has brought to us. And Saint Fra one of St. Francis' memorable statements says, preach the gospel and use words if you have to. Each and every one of us has the opportunity from this time forward to share God's good news, to make God's presence alive for each and for all. We all know that we live in a world that is very troubled in so many different ways. We know that it is hard on God to see the world the shape that it is. And that's why the Spirit leads each and every one of us here today, so that we will know that God is present with us, that God empowers us with God's Spirit, and God enables us to go out and bear witness like a mighty wind into the world this day and tomorrow and forever and ever. Again, this is a day that we gather together to share 
and the hope and the promises that we have received in Christ Jesus. It is important for us to bear witness, not only in our actions, but in our prayers. So are there joys and concerns that we should be sharing with the congregation today? Mr. Sanders is bringing some up. So one for Diane Castor, who has a fractured hip, and Ronnie Castor for health concerns. And for also for Linda, Dolores, Mary Lou, Robert, Brian, and Bob. We keep them all in our prayers. Other joys and concerns that we can share before the congregation. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord God, ruler of the universe. For you give of yourself to bring good news to us. You have, re you have revealed your truth to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now you pour your Holy Spirit upon us. Sustain our lives and make our hearts glad. We ask you, dear Lord, to continue to guide us and direct us in your peace. We give you thanks for the gift of creation, for the sun and the stars in the sky, for the rain that falls that nourishes for plant life and all animal life, for the waters that flow through the land. We give you thanks that we share the bounty of your creation. Enable us to share the abundance of your creation with all in all times. Bless all the food that you have given us and help us to receive it with thankful hearts. By your spirit, nourish our love for one another and for our neighbors in need. Loving God, as you have given your spirit to the disciples to speak in many different languages so that many different peoples will hear your good news, we know that you have gathered us together across all human divisions and reconciled us to yourself in one body through the cross. Strengthen us now by your presence, that by our thoughts and actions, that we may be rooted and grounded in your love for us. You have called us to labor in your vineyard, and without you we can do nothing. Grant your gracious presence here and wherever we might be, let your Holy Spirit govern and direct us that we may live peacefully together, pleasing you with all that we say and do. Let your spirit of truth be our guide and our direction for that which we speak, for where our feet take us, and for those lives that we come up against. May your presence be like a mighty wind that pushes us beyond complacency. May it be a mighty wind that moves us into those places where there is hurt, there is sadness, there is distress. May your mighty wind move us into some places that we will bring reconciliation and hope to all people. May your spirit be like a fire in us, a passion to do good, to love kindness, and to bear witness to the hope that you have for each 
and every one of us. May your Spirit reach into the very depths of our hearts that we may be able to reach into the depths of others to see their hurts, to feel their pains, to uplift them, and to bring them hope. For those who are broken of body, spirit, and relationship, may we as the church be helpful hands and compassionate hearts to bring healing and wholeness to all. Gracious Lord, we know that you are good and you have breathed your goodness throughout creation. May your goodness work through us as the Spirit directs us in ways not only to bear witness to your good news, but that we may learn to love one another in the same way that you love us. Like Philip, we ask many questions. Sometimes questions because we don't understand. Help us always to listen to the word of Jesus, to know his good works, and now the good works that work in and through us as the church here today. Continue to bless us. Enable us to see your hope in us. And may, may we be able to express that hope in our relationships with one another. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Good and gracious Lord, we thank you for this opportunity on this Sabbath day to come together as your people. Embrace us with your presence. Protect us from all harm and danger and enable us to continue to walk in the ways that you've shown to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. In his name we pray. We invite the congregation to rise as you're able as we sing our closing hymn, Fill Me Now. and comfort, bless and save me, bathe, O 
that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the whole creation waits with eager longing for the, for the revealing of the children of God. That is which we are, children of God. In the freedom of God's glory, to live in the hope that we are saved. The hope that continues to guide us and direct us. The hope that enables us to know that we are blessed today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Wherever you go, God is with you. Wherever you go, God is there. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you are in God's care. Wherever we go, God is with us. Wherever we go, God is there. Wherever we go, 